Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Can I start off with the story? Yeah, story time's always the best. Okay, so I don't know if you know, but I mean, I did football, so I'm like kind of athletic, but like I got some city miles now. So like my back like hurts a lot of the time whenever I try to like do some like extracurricular activities. Okay, so, you know, I went with my sister and a couple other people to go hiking, right? So we're going hiking, right? The trail that they wanted to go to, it wasn't, like, open at that time. So like, oh, hey, uh, there's this easy one, right? And I was like, heck, yeah. I'm like, this is working for me, easy. I was like, I love this, right? So I'm going, right? And because of my back problems, I'm, like, walking up here, and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'm feeling it a little bit more. I'm like, I thought this was the easy one, guys. Like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. We're we're almost there. We're almost there, right? And and then 15 minutes go by, and I'm like, I can't see the mountaintop. And, like, my pain's getting worse. I'm like, hey, guys, like, what happened to this is the easiest one? And they're like, oh, don't worry about it, Isaac. It's it's all about it. It's going to be fun. Just, you know, fellowship, you know, the Christian thing to do, right? It's fellowship. It's fellowship. Let's just enjoy it. Like, no. I mean, I'm like Don. I'm huffing and puffing, right? Like, I'm like, (laughs) like, going up, right? And then, you know. I'm going to be honest to who saved me. You know, it's the camera guy back there, Jesse Mendoza. Yeah, say hi, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. No one said hi with me. It's okay. I'm going to say hi. But Jesse saved me because, like, he, every time, like, I was, like, slowing down, you know, he did that, like, the comforting friend thing. Hey, man, don't worry. I'm tired, too. I'm the only one huffing and puffing, though. And he's like, you are? Like, you know? And then he's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. We're going to keep going. All right, so we... He stops with me along the way. You know, he was a great friend, right? So we're going up the mountain, like, and then they're like, oh, my God, like, like, this is it. All we have is just this one thing, and, like, then we get to see the whole beautiful scenery, right? And, like, I've never been there before, but, you know, when that, you're that, there's that one guy in the group that acts like they've been there but, like, wants to stay behind but pretends it's like, no, I'm giving you the opportunity. No, that's what I did. So I was like, hey, you know what, guys? You guys go right ahead. You guys go right ahead. I'm good right here. And they're like, come on, it's beautiful. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sparing them. No, go, no, guys. I don't want to, I don't want to, you guys just go, right? And then you always got that one guy in the group who brings out the what would Jesus do type thing. And, you know, there was Jesse, but then, you know, his brother Elliot was the one who used that one. What would Jesus do, Isaac? Yeah, you back there. Yeah, he was like, what would Jesus do? I'm like, oh, man, there's always got to be that guy. So I was like, I'm like, oh, my, all right. So I'm going, right? I slip almost a couple times, but on the way down, like, it's going good. I'm like, hey, you know, I heard that, you know, going down is better than going up, right? So I'm, like, going down. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. It's like, like my back suddenly got healed. I'm like, yes, like, I'm, I'm going down. But the thing is, I slip, right? And this is a steep hill. So I just go, whoop, and I'm, like, ready to fall. The grace of God, an angel catches me. It's not an angel because his arm was really hairy and ended up being Jesse. You know, he caught me. And it was like nothing, dude. I, I felt like I was like a little baby block. Like he just picked me right back up. And I was like, oh, my God. Like it felt great. I was like, thank you. You know, and it happened again. More of the story, I hate hiking. What does it have to do with the message? You'll see. Okay. But like have you ever been tired before? And raise your hand if you've ever been tired before. Emotionally, physically, you know spiritually, relationally, we all get tired. To be honest with you, like this year, I think has been one of the most tiring like years for me. And I'm only 19, man. And I feel like I've been through the ringer. I'm like, oh my God. You know, being in church, like it's a beautiful thing, but you know, stuff happens in church, let's be real. You know, and, and I've had things happen. And man, I, I got some city miles to me. Like, I'm like a car that you need to trade in now before the wheels come off. You know, but that's the beauty of God. You know, that he can change that. But you know what? The point is, though, I want to make that I felt really tired today, too. When I was writing my message, I was like, man, like, I just got back. I just started school again, the whole cycle again. Um, You know, I went to COC. I did bookkeeping today. It was fun. It was tiring. It was nasty. Um, So I went home, and I was like, I still need to study. And I was just tired. So, like, I laid down. I told my mom. She was there. I was like, mom, I'm just going to take a 20-minute nap. Right? So I go. I'm going to lay down. I don't know the weight limit on this, so I'm not going to lay, lay down on it. <laughs> you know, Papa's gained a few pounds. but So I lay down, right? And I'm like, I put my alarm 20 minutes. 20 minutes goes by, you know, that, that satanic sound. Ding, 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 you know, uh, that always wakes you up. Like, that happened. I just snoozed that sucker. I was like, no, no, no. 
I went back to sleep. I snoozed it again, again, again. And then, like, usually I take naps, though, because it really helps me clear my mind for what I'm going to speak about. That's just my thing, right? But I was just really tired, and I didn't want to wake up. Like, almost to the point, like, I told myself, I'll wing it. But, of course, I'll never wing it. But I was like, I'll wing it. And then, I, and then like, that's when God hit me with the revelation. I legit was, like, laying down. This is legit what happened. If there was a camera in my room, you'd see it. So I'm like this. I'm sleeping, and then I go... Like, I, I, like, went straight up, and I was like, I got it. I grabbed my thing, and I was like, all right, I know. The, I grabbed my, like, you know, computer thing, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to write my message. So here's the point of all that. Like, have you ever been, like, so tired you don't want to do anything with God? You've been so tired, like, you just feel like you just, ugh. Like, you feel chained. Like, you don't even want to get up. Like, you're okay with quitting. Has anyone gotten that tired? Don't lie. Some of you, no, never, not me. Not me, brother. <laughs> No, I've been, I've been tired. This year, I, I've questioned my relationship with God more than ever. And my parents are the pastors. All right? That doesn't mean, like, I get holy water, like, on my lunch, pal, like, <laughs> like every day. Like, no. Like, I don't have my relationship with God through them. I have a relationship with God on my own. But let me tell you, that relationship was hurting. Oh, it was hurting. Like, I remember... Um, when I, when I was in youth and they were like, well, Lexi was the team generate leader. You know, she's like, we should do that again. And I was like, maybe, she's like, maybe like you could lead it. And I was like, yeah. Like in my inside though, I'm like, <laughs> you know, like I felt drained. I didn't want to do it. But honestly, like for the regen people, not only for that, but for the youth who are here, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be up here. You guys gave me that kick. Like you guys were that red bull for me. And like, you know, I told the regen people, I'm like, um, that's our, like, student leadership team. I was like, man, this is, like, this message is my love letter to you guys and to the youth. You know, thank you. You know, but you know what? Sometimes we, you don't get that amazing support all the time. Sometimes life hits and you got nobody, like nobody. You know, and, and I know that for me, life began to suck. Like, has anyone ever, like, felt like just anxiety, fear, doubt grips them all the time? Like, you didn't even want, like, you've got so accustomed to your situation that you don't even know what it's like to get out anymore. And, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, we create some of our own darkness, too. Um, you know, when you, you know, let's say, like, I go like this, right? Right? I'm creating my own darkness, right? Is it, is it night outside, right? It is, right? Correct? Wow, man, tough crowd. It's night, okay? It's 7.39. It's night, all right? <laughs> but, you know... There's darkness. Trust me, there's darkness. You have your darkness. I'm not trying to downplay what you've been through. We've all been through it. We've all hit those moments in life where we can feel depressed, feel oppressed. We can feel doubtful. You feel like you're just getting through the ringer. But let me tell you this. When you even start thinking about quitting and when you allow that even to come into your, your language and your lingo, you go like this. So not only do you have the real darkness, but you created your own. All right? Can I be selfish tonight? Is that Okay. Is that okay with you? Do I have permission? I want permission, all right? I want my dad being like, hey, they said no. You know? <laughs> all right, I'm going to tell you guys about a Bible story that I love. And this person, I think, like, he's probably the best person in the Bible. No one ever talks about him. He's, he's amazing. Let me, try, let me tell you, it's Jesus, then it's him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can tell one person's not down. <laughs> no, but it's Jesus, then it's this guy. You want to know what his name is? Isaac. Remember Isaac from the Bible? Remember that cute old story where, like, Abraham takes him up the mountain and all that? Okay, can we read it together? Let me tell you why. He's, like, the dopest person in the Bible. All right. It said, Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled his donkey. He took two of his young servants and his son, Isaac. Woo! Isaac. You don't know how many jokes I had about that growing up. He had split wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God had directed him. On the third day, he looked up and saw the place in the distance. Continue. Abraham told his two young servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I are going over there to worship, and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and gave it to Isaac, his son, to carry. He carried the flint and the knife. I don't even know what the flint is, but you just picture in your head. The two of them went off together. Isaac, woo! Isaac said to Abraham, his father, yes, my son, we have flint and wood, but where's the sheep for the burnt offering? See, aren't we intelligent, Isaacs? Uh, Abraham said, son, God will see to it that there's a sheep for the burnt offering, and they kept on walking together. They arrived at the place to which God had directed him, and Abraham built an altar. He laid it out 
uh, he laid out the wood, then he tied up Isaac. Whoa, that escalated. And laid him on the wood. Abraham reached out and took the, took the knife to kill his son. Just then an angel of God called to him out of heaven. Abraham, Abraham, yes, I'm listening. Don't lay a hand on that boy. Don't touch him. Now I know how fearlessly you fear God. You didn't hesitate to place your son, your dear son, on the altar for me. Woo, that's a phone. Abraham looked up. He saw a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. Abraham took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Wait, leave the scripture though. Okay, this scripture, I usually tell my dad when he's upset at me. I'm like, don't lay a hand on the boy. Don't touch him. <laughs> now I know how fearlessly you fear God. You didn't hesitate to place your son, your dear son, on the altar for me. I'm like, don't. Dad, wait. Alexis did something bad too. You know. <laughs> you thought it was going to be something spiritual too. You're like, wait for it. Like, no. <laughs> Man, I, I really threw everyone off now. But that's a good scripture in your, if you're in trouble. Um, no, but, you know, everyone talks about Abraham, the father of faith. But who talks about Isaac? <laughs> Poor, okay, like, no. Nah. You know, like, if you study Isaac, you know, he wasn't a little boy. You know, he was almost like, he's like, maybe like 18, 19 20 years old, he's around that age. So it wasn't a little boy. Like, I know we all, like, try to make the cute little story for parents. Yes, and he wrapped his son, like, and, you know, in sticks. Like, no, no, this is a grown man. So imagine Abraham's faith, but, but Isaac's. Okay, Abraham's the father of faith, and Isaac's, like, the product of it. So it's like, you assume that he was cool with it. Like, it just went straight in, and he laid his son on the altar. Like, who talks about Isaac? Shoot, if I were Isaac, I am Isaac. But if I were Isaac, I'd be like, what the heck? Imagine my faith with God, okay? So if you think about it, Isaac willingly put himself on the altar. No one was forced. God doesn't force anyone. Isaac was willingly able to lay himself down on the altar. And you know what? That, that meant death. It's not like Isaac got, like, T-voted and fast forward and knew that, you know, he'd be saved in the end. No. He, he gladly laid his life down, knowing that all his life he was the promise that God told him. Imagine how quick of, of, of a reality check that would have been. You're the promised son, but now you're destined to die for your father to proclaim his faith to God. You know, no one ever thinks about that. But you know what? You don't really hear much about Isaac after the story. You just figure out that he had, you know, Jacob, Esau, all that mess. But the thing is, is like, think about Isaac, his faith. Isaac's you and me. Because that story is determined for you and me. And you know what? There's three levels with God that we have. It's the valley, you know, when you first meet God. It's like beautiful, cute flowers, worships, like, oh, my God. You know, like you're in it. There's minimal, there's minimal obstacles, like, but you're, you're down with God. Does anyone remember that? Like, I remember me. Like, I was like crisscross applesauce, children's ministry, goldfish, you know. I was, <laughs> that, that, was, mm, that was the good days with God. You know what I mean? Snacks, you know, youth, like, they get to look forward to ice cream, all that. Shoot, I have to wait for all of you now to finish. And I'm like, oh, well, I want my ice cream. No, but... <laughs> Then there's, then there's the mountainside with God. You know the mountainside? Where it's like you're growing more with God. You're serving now. There's more opposition though. Like there's, life's hitting you, but you're like, I got God. Like I'm good, you know? And then there's the mountaintop. You know, everyone knows the mountaintop for the blessing, right? Mount, get to your mountaintop. But let me tell you, the mountaintop is the biggest graveyard for Christians. Biggest graveyard. That's where faith goes to die for most Christians. You know, because we're like Isaac, but a lot of us say no to Abraham. No, because God, yes, you've sacrificed on the way from the valley to the mountainside. You've sacrificed things, your own agenda, so you can go and serve. Like, yeah, but, but God, I serve at the, at the 8, 10, and I receive at the 12. I don't want to go serve at blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, yeah, and, but then you end up, like, giving in, and you're like, you know, I'm going to go and serve. But sometimes God's asking for you to sacrifice yourself. That means, like, you laying yourself on the altar and giving God all of you. You know what? And let me tell you this. Let me get somebody up here. Josue, get up here. Run, Josue, run, run. <laughs> Woo, Josue. You know, you're, you're thinner than me, so I want you to lay down on this. Lay down, bro. Take a nap. Yeah, just take a nap. Now I'm going to body surf you. No, I'm just kidding. No, but imagine this. This is Isaac. He's laying down. Let me give you the illustration. So this is you and I. That's Isaac. You know, and when you're laying down, you know, if, if you read another uh, translation, it says that Abraham tied, tied Isaac down. So 
Isaac not only willingly gave his life, but he was giving him the whole full course experience of a burnt offering. <laughs> right? And he's like, hey, don't worry about it. <sighs> Just tiny, you know? And let me tell you, when God puts you on, when he asks you to go on the altar, oh my, you're going to get the experience. He, sometimes you're going to feel like you're tied down to your situation. You're tied down to your financial troubles. You're tied down to your kids acting out. You're tied down with your marriage failing. You're tied down with all the worries about life and this and that. Trust me, that's how I felt for a year. You're doing a great job, I swear. <laughs> but he's going to tie you down. Trust me, oh, he's going to give you the experience. And you're going to feel like God has left you the most. Let me tell you, but God isn't Abraham. That's life. Life's going to tie you down. Life's going to give you the whole full course five meal experience of burnt wood. You know? And the thing is, is that, yeah, it was beautiful, you know, how God intervened. But let me tell you this. This is where Christians go and fail. See, he tied him down. And then Abraham had the knife. And let me tell you, some of us know how to untie knots really well. Some of us are like, you know what, I'm not going to wait for God. I'm going to do it my way. And they untie themselves, and Josue unties himself, and he grabs the knife right from me. We're fighting. Fight me. The knife. He, ah! You know? Like, that's how we fight with God. No! Like, I don't want you. You know? Trust me, you get like that. Don't lie. Trust me, spiritually, you're like fighting God. You're like, no, I don't want to budge. No, I don't want to move. No, I don't want to give more time for you. No, I don't want to answer the call. No, it's too difficult. No, my financial troubles are too much for me. No, life's getting worse and worse. I like it here. Trust me, you like it there. Trust me. Because if you really wanted to get out, you do whatever it takes. You'd lay on that altar. Yeah, you, you, you got to trust God, though, that he's going to pull through. And let me tell you this. Most people... Most Christians commit spiritual suicide because they take the knife, and when life slips from their hands, it slips and falls into them. That's how most Christians go to die, right on the mountaintop where blessings should have come. If, not, if, if Isaac only waited, that's when the ram came, right? It was right at the last second. Sometimes the knife of life is going to go right here, and then God says, stop, because he, he beat death, hell, and the grave, and he owns life. So in reality... The impossibility was not you surviving, but it was the ram. Let me tell you why. Rams are good climbers. You're good, Josue. You can go. Thank you. Let's all give a round of applause for Josue. He was falling asleep. No, I'm just kidding. But let me tell you the impossibility here. It was the ram. Why? Rams are good climbers, but, you know, mountain goats are better. Rams weren't meant to go to the mountaintop. They weren't. So the real impossibility in this situation was not you and I laying on the altar, not Isaac laying on the altar. The impossibility was the blessing that was coming. All you needed to do was wait. That's, that's how good God is. But we can't see it because we're so consumed with what's tying us down. Man, Isaac laid his life. He trusted the, the father of faith, his own father. He trusted him and symbolized him as God. Not he, him being God, no, but he's like, no, I trust God because he trusts God. And I'm going to take the knife. I bet he had the faith that, shoot, God, you better resurrect me. <laughs> <laughs> but are you going to be willing to take the knife? Trust me, it's not going to go through you, I promise you. You've made it this far, right? Let's, why did we forget? How did we get so far off that we forgot the goodness of God? How? Dude, are we like goldfish? We forgot like a m- moments after, like whoop, whoop, forgot. <laughs> That's how we are with God. We're the most forgetful relationship. We are. We're so unfaithful with Him, and that's why I'm saying the mountaintop is the biggest grave. Because let me tell you, most Christians they take the knife, and I'm sorry if it slips and falls. You can't blame it on God. You can't blame it on the people around you. The only person you can blame is you. Who was the one who was gladly laying down on the altar? You and I. But most people, they give up too. They, only, they see the altar, like, peace. <laughs> but only if they knew that their ram was coming. Their blessing was coming. But when you try to rush things, and when you try to make it your own, the, the Isaac version, the, the Isaac's plan of success, like, <laughs> uh-uh, the sh- yeah, there's Isaac's plan of success. I mean, how many times have you tried to do it, and you haven't listened to God? How many times do you get bit in the butt? I mean, <laughs> let the record speak for itself. Imagine if I quit. On you guys, imagine if I quit. We wouldn't have a regen. I wouldn't have been able to grow as much as I have with you all. 
especially the youth. I, I gladly will lay down my life again on that altar anytime, knowing if I get to see your beautiful faces and get to see you get the experience from God. And that's for you as well. Anyone in your sphere's influence, lay down on that altar gladly because you get to push other people with you when you go up the mountain. Why? Because you get an experience. But let me tell you, it's a cycle. There's going to be a lot of mountains, there's going to be a lot of valleys. But the more you build your trust with God, shoot, you're invincible. Imagine what we could do if only we knew that the ram was coming. Can we put up my last scripture, please? For the Lord's training of your life is the evidence of his faithful love. And when he draws you to himself, it proves you are his delightful child. You know, this verse will really carry you into the hard places that you are having with God. This verse, it proves to you his love for you. See, he didn't make Isaac just lay down just to test Abraham's faith. It was also Isaac's. Because you know what? A lot of the times, us as children, when you have your parents that are faithful with God, it takes us a minute to get there too. Let's be real. It takes us a minute. It took me a long minute, a minute 30 seconds <laughs> to get where I am with God. But it wasn't, my mom doesn't make me lay down every morning illustration like, you ready, Isaac? Like, no. <laughs> it's my choice. It's my choice. Now I get to gladly lay down my life as my parents gladly laid down theirs. And what about you? What will you do? Will you allow the pains and the troubles of this world to, to make you miss out on your blessing? I hope not. I hope not. That'd be the biggest mistake. Trust me, the knife is scary. Life is scary. But you're going to have that God encounter when he says, no, because he rules all. And only if you give him just an ounce of your faith. So if anxiety is holding you back, all you need is an ounce. If depression is holding you back, all you need is an ounce. And yes, this year has been super hard for me. Shoot, this week, right, mom? This week was hard for me. I wanted to quit. You don't know how much I was tormented this week. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was good enough to be up here. And yeah, I've done it. It's been great. It's cool to get the amens and to get the people to be like, wow, you're so inspiring and you're only blah, blah, blah. That's great. That's fading. But I needed a God encounter. And it didn't look like this whole thing where, where manna fell from heaven and the presence just came in so thick. Nah. What, what really changed my perspective is just me saying, God, I need you to redeem me and take me wherever you need me to go. Lay me down on that altar. I'm not even going to close my eyes no more. I'm ready to accept my reality that things don't look great. That things aren't feeling good. And I will gladly look at that knife almost come down on me. But I will gladly look at the father who, who's right there waiting at that last moment to bring that ram. Because my ram is my promise. Your ram is your promise. All you need to do is wait. Just wait patiently. Trust me. God will intervene. If you need a miracle, all you need to do is wait. He's even letting you lay down. He tied you down. There's, trust me. When God, is, he's not tying you down to those situations. No, that's just what it looks like to us. He's tying us down to his love. Because burnt offerings are an offering of our love for Jesus. So really, you're not, you, you see all the situations. Yeah, he puts the ugly out there. That's why it's wood, it sticks, and that's why he uses the fire of his love to burn that. And he brings you a ram. You just need to wait. Trust me, wait. God is real. Just lay down. Lay down. And if you don't know that, that Jesus and you haven't been there with him, trust me, it's going to get hard. It will, but you can make it through. Because you have a family here with you that's ready to fight with you. And I'm committed to not, to not trying to jump off the altar and to run away. No, I'm going to stay on that altar. And I can't wait for that ram to come. And then I'm going to go on another mountain and another mountain and another mountain. Physically, I can't. I don't know if I can do another mountain. <laughs> Spiritually, I'm like six-pack buff bodybuilder. That's what I hope I look like. <laughs> I just tell myself that so I can feel better. I'm like, yeah. I look in the mirror. My sister's like, what are you doing? I'm like, looking at me spiritually, dog. Only, only if you could see. <laughs> no, but for you, you, we've all gone through a lot of things. Speaking to some of you, you all have been through some terrible things. Some things I wish I could take back from you that didn't exist, but they do. 
But know this, that God loves all of you. And he has a plan for you. And he can redeem you. And know that, yeah, you may be going through a lot of crap. Yeah, you may feel like you want to quit. But if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be up here. In your attitude of wanting to quit, in the midst of your chaos and the fear and the doubt, you motivated somebody else. And that's how beautiful God can do. That's the beautiful things that God can do with you. It doesn't matter what place you're in. You don't need to have it all together. Don't be that person that thinks that they do. You're not going to reach anybody. But if you can come to a place where you know that you're dealing through a lot of crap, but you know that you have an amazing father who has amazing blessings for you, trust me, you can go far. And you'll motivate others. If I, if I didn't have my family and, and, and youth, I don't know if I could do it. Even to the point where my family, they go through many things too. But if I didn't have the youth, man, I don't know if I could do it. For all of them and for all of you. And let me speak life into you. Don't quit. I believe in you. With all my heart. With everything in me. And know that there's a father in heaven who loves you. And he just wants to bring you the blessing. And yeah, it's gonna, there's going to be a lot of turmoil. There's going to be a lot of pain. There's going to be a lot of knots. But know that you get to get off the bed just like Josue did. And he got to run off. And you get to run off to your next mountain. So with that, can I have everyone bow their heads and close their eyes? If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.